Meet us yes. in invocation. Let us pray together. Father, we ask your blessings to be on our gathering this morning. Give us, uh, as we enter into this new year, give us uh, fresh eyes and uh, new vision, Lord, and um, just energize us, Lord, to fulfill the task that you have assigned us today. And we just pray your hand, your wisdom, your guidance on us today. In your name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Would you please call the roll? Bob and Serby? Here. Barbara Craig? Here. Russ Wynn? Here. Chairman Curlander? Here. Richard Donnelly? Here. Roger Brunswick? Here. James Rooster? Here. Uh, the, the previous minutes uh, need to be approved. Motion. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? Roll call. Bob and Serpy? Here. Barbara Craig? Yes. 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 Russell? Yes. Chairman Carlander? Yes. Richard Donnelly? Yes. Roger Brunswick? Yes. Jim Morris there? Yes. <clears throat> this is the time of the meeting where we have public comment. Is there anyone who wishes to speak? Good morning. I'm Mike Maurer with William Ravis Commercial Real Estate. I uh, represent a number of stakeholders um, that own vacant commercial land within the city limits. I just wanted to say that uh, I attended yesterday's subcommittee meeting and uh, I want to thank uh, Richard and, and Robert and James uh, for, for listening to, to what I had to say on behalf of potential uh, purchasers and developers within the city. I think we had a really good dialogue yesterday and, and I think we came to a, a a mutual understanding of what you guys are trying to accomplish as well as trying to preserve the ability for people to do business within the city and I think it uh, it resulted in a very positive outcome and, and I'm excited to see uh, what the board has to say about about what happened yesterday thank you. thank you is there any other public comment hearing none uh, yesterday there was a uh, subcommittee meeting uh, Mr. Donnelly was the chair. Uh, would you present the report from yesterday's meeting to us, please? Uh, yes, happy to, Mr. Chairman. It was the uh, second time we met. Um, the, of course, the committee members, Mr. Versister, uh, Mr. Inserpi, and myself, and also attending in all of our meetings were uh, city staff, were very, very helpful. And our task, basically, uh, after having our initial the board's initial thoughts about the two-stage process for approval, having met with little success, was to reevaluate uh, where we might go in terms of getting information that we need to make intelligent, reasoned decisions about PUD project applications. And basically where, where we came down in our efforts was that uh, our attack should be on the submittal procedure and the su submittal documents and data. At that point, uh, that was our focus. We did not address any legal issues. We did not address any changes to the overall process. Uh, we did not address any possible changes to the documents, uh, i.e. chapters three and chapter uh, four. But we, so we did focus our efforts on the submittal procedure and what, how that should be adjusted so that we have enough information as a board to make reasoned and uh, thoughtful decisions to the council. What I'd like to do today, uh, you do have a handout uh, available to you to read, but I'd like to do uh, a couple of things before we get to discuss that. Uh, I would like Mr. Worcester, who has spent a lot of time on this, on this, on our efforts, uh, to sort of summarize in narrative fashion uh, what our thinking was, what our objects were, and uh, after his uh, comments, I would ask John Dahmer to uh, take us through some of the samples of 
of documents that other cities have used and his thoughts about those. I also asked him at that point in his presentation to talk a little bit about the history of, of how we got to where we are today and perhaps where we're going. And after that presentation, I think we as a board can sit down and go over our, some, our, our presentation, more specifically uh, the documents that we uh, call conceptual. Uh, I think as, we, as you listen to us today, the concept of, concept of conceptual is very important. What we're proposing are, is conceptual drawings, conceptual drawings that address three major uh, topics, architectural, site plan, and landscaping. But at this point, let us move on, and I would ask Jim if you could sort of walk us through the, the narrative portion of this presentation. Any other thoughts that you might have since you've devoted a lot of time, and uh, we want to thank you for that time that you uh, put in you. on this subcommittee. Thanks. Okay, th th thanks, Mr. Donnelly. Uh, this is, I'm, I'm going to read this because it's kind of... Uh, my, it expresses my feelings on where we are. The Zoning Board and the City Council have agreed that changes to the current Zoning Board and subsequent City Council's process need some pretty serious adjustments uh, in, for the plan development projects. We are both de desiring more information as to the applicant's intentions as to any specific site to be developed. We have investigated our neighbors, Naples and Estero, as to their current requirements for the zoning approval process. The information required by these two entities offer generally what we feel we need to be presented with in order to understand the, what the applicant wants to accomplish with a real project. Easily stated, we want to see and understand what we are approving. Our intentions are not to lengthen the time from the start of a project to shovel in the ground, nor increase the applicant's upfront costs to get there. To that end, the Zoning Board has identified a list of su submittal requirements <clears throat> for conceptual drawings. In general, Conceptual drawings must show the uses, densities, intensities, performance standards, and development process that are consistent with the Bonita Springs Comprehensive Plan and the Land Development Code. Now that's just a lead in to um, amplify what Rich has already told us. And then the next thing is to get into the details of what that means and how we're gonna get there and hopefully John will lead us through that. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Please. Way back in December of last year, we discussed uh, our discussions with Estero and the City of Naples, with the City Council, and asked them whether they wanted us to proceed with amending our zoning. And they did provide that direction, and as a result, we have sat down as a subcommittee to go through some examples from those two jurisdictions and to figure out those areas which you like and those areas we wish to avoid. Uh, what has been presented to you in this packet is not a complete application for either jurisdiction, but it does include a lot of uh, the submittal requirements for those areas in which you've shown interest, and mainly site planning, landscaping, and aesthetics. In our committee meetings, we have gone through and narrowed down uh, to a couple of these as good examples of, of what the subcommittee thinks that we should start focusing our attentions on and amending our submittal requirements to include. The first is basically the last slide of a presentation from the, the village of Estero and what you'll see on this uh, is an aerial where they have imposed a colorized site plan and in that plan, it shows all the parking areas, landscaped areas, building locations uh, in hard uh, paved surfaces. Not dimensioned or engineered, but it does show that uh, everything they're planning to propose on the site does fit. You can see where it goes. You can see how it relates not only internally, but externally. Yes, sir. Now, this would be part of a pattern book? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. 
And there and the the village of Estero's pattern book, as it was explained to us, includes the elevations of the buildings, so you can see the architectural style and massing. It includes the site plan that was just shown to you and is in your packet, uh, placed on, on top of an aerial. And that site plan needs to include all forms of access, whether it's pedestrian, vehicular, uh, multimodal, and needs to show parking areas, building areas, uh, essentially what you would see on, on, a, on a site plan for a master concept plan, and also uh, elevations with landscaping imposed in front of them. That leads us to another one of the examples, which is the elevation that was provided. One of the reasons I was holding this up as an example in our subcommittee meeting yesterday is because uh, we were looking to find a balance for those projects, smaller commercial projects versus larger commercial projects. In a smaller commercial project, it's very easy to be specific because there generally intends to be one or maybe two buildings. Those buildings you already have end users or you, you can only do so much with the site. For larger projects that have uh, multiple parcels, maybe no real in, end users for, for most of those, uh, what do you do to provide that specific information not only to this board but to city council and, and allow uh, a developer enough flexibility as end users are identified, property sold and developed uh, to go ahead and, and use that entitlement. And, and I like this as an example because it provides uh, you and council enough information to see architectural style, how the building is going to be uh, designed within reason, but it also allows some flexibility to maintain this style and massing. So I don't know if we need to have something that is identical to this, but I like the thought of this as something that you would be able to have and review. Another one of the items in John, the uh, yes, sir, let me interrupt for a sec just a second. On that view, we, we probably would re want to require, in my opinion, we should require dimensions and more, uh, a little bit more detail than what shows up on that particular uh, exhibit, uh, where, where we, we, we've now defined the project and, uh, to fit on a site we we um, we can look at dimensions for and I'm, for example the, uh, the gathering um, project at uh, Terry and um, 041 the uh, the apartment projects there the commercial uh, a big project neat project but what was presented uh, really left off a lot of dimensions relative to the arches and the walkways and so forth and, and that's really important because that's the the entrance to the project it's the big splash that uh, you, everyone sees from the street and uh, if it's not uh, the, the we shouldn't have to scale something off of a, a, a rendering we, a dimension should show up so we fully understand um, what's presented Thank you. And to that effort, Mr. Worcester, and I thank you for that because under the section uh, for the Naples submittal, there is page SK06, Broad Avenue Elevations. There's a handful of these, but this is the one I happened to pull out of the packet. And if you'll see, the elevation does have dimensions on it, both for height and for width, and does provide a little bit more of that detail that, that was just discussed. And I think it is a very good example of what we could include. Thank you. <coughs> yes, sir. No, go ahead. Finish it. Moving along with, with what we had discussed, this is the, the elevation with the landscape plan imposed on that. I think this is an important example of what you could require because it shows you not only the elevation of the building with the architecture, but also shows you uh, what you will see from the street because the landscaping is imposed in front of that. We have not previously required this. This is something that has um, caused a little bit of, of consternation in the past because uh, what's been presented to both this board and, and the city council with various levels of detail is just the elevation of the architectural style. When that building is then placed behind landscaping, obviously it looks a little bit different. Portions of it are visible, portions of it that are, are now hidden, and this would allow you to get a better feel for what that view will actually be when the, when the site's constructed. 
Uh, one of the last items I, w I wanted to go through specifically before we really get into our discussion was <coughs> the idea of, of a schematic. And what has come up in several hearings, not too many, but with several hearings, has, has been a discussion on why exterior portions of a building cannot be changed because of the interior design. And in the past, we've never looked at what the interior of a building was going to include or how it was going to be laid out. And we've never been able to relate that requirement or that design with the exterior <laughs> styling or massing. So uh, I don't know if, if this board or the council wants to start requiring these type of, of uh, renderings or this schematic you may want to do so on certain types of uses or certain locations. I know that uh, in the past, the discussions have generally involved hotel uses. I have not really seen the discussion on how the interior affects the exterior, uh, except for those, those discussions. But that is entirely up to, to you and to the city council. So that was my brief walkthrough and recap of, of our discussions. But I do want all of your input in terms of what you would like to see and how you would like to see it. I'd like to uh, uh, tell you uh, about our meetings with uh, Naples and uh, Estero. Uh, unfortunately, we could not go together um, because the law prohibited that. At least that's what we were told. So uh, John and I and the city manager uh, went to Estero and John and I went to Naples. Uh, the Naples process requires upon filing your application, a full, complete, detailed site plan. It is the development order. What we call the development order, they call a site plan. And they require that when you file your application. Remarkable. So obviously we, we have chosen not to go that route. And, uh, we're going uh, far less onerous. Now, in, in Estero, the meeting was very interesting. And what was particularly interesting was the, uh, <coughs> the discussion about the design review board uh, because they, the problems that uh, some of us have imagined with the design review board are, became apparent at the meeting. They had to dismiss uh, their first design review board, at least majority of the members, because of conflicts of interest. And they have re a reconstituted uh, design review board that thinks that they are the policy makers for the, uh, for the village of Estero. And they have taken it upon themselves, the, you know, the very specifics in the law with regard to uh, wh what kind of building architecture they have Mediterranean and they have uh, Florida old Florida that's it it's there those are the only two permitted and they said well we don't like that idea so therefore we're going to allow everything well unfortunately <laughs> you know so that's a little bit of, uh, a little bit of an issue the second issue that we found in Estero was that the process drags on the third thing we found out is they are totally redoing their land development code from beginning to end. They have hired a uh, consulting firm, Clarion, to work with them to do a whole new. The cost, 260000 for Clarion, plus all the attendant costs. So you're talking a half a million dollars by the time they're, they're, they're done. Um, it provides us uh, with an opportunity. We sit back, uh, let, them do it. let them do it. Let's see what uh, what comes forth. Good stuff. I mean, I, I saw what Clarion, some of, some of their work, it's really excellent. Uh, but, you know, they're going to have a very uh, detailed, uh, their, their requirements are going to be uh, quite broad, a lot broader than what you're recommending here. So I think that we're in a kind of a sweet spot, and I kind of like what you did, and congratulate you. Thank you very much. Did you want to say anything else, John, or? No, sir, I just. Um, before we get comments from everybody. We had had a discussion before about trying to implement a few of the things that, that both of those jurisdictions did without 
changing our, our process as a whole. And, and that was entirely where our discussion has been. I would think that once this is amended in whatever form it takes uh, and, and some time has passed, we'll probably want to come back and take a look at that process itself, not just the submittal requirements and whether we model ourselves on, on sh recent changes in Astero or whether we look to do something entirely uh, Benita specific, I don't know, but that will probably, I would anticipate, be the next step in this, in this journey. From the uh, Zoning Board, comments? Yeah, I'd like to make a comment. <clears throat> you know, it was good that you two went down to the Naples and to the Astero. But again, we're not Naples, we're not Astero. What this subcommittee put together with John, and went through all of this, put everything on black and white. If, this, if we guide ourselves by this, we'll have no problem. Problem is, and I say it to John and I say it to everybody else, it's important that city council, staff, and the zoning board are all on the same sheet of music. If one drops the ball and doesn't bother reading or investigating, we defeated our purpose. Okay? It's imperative that the three chairs get together. We've got to work together on this. So this I'd is like a piece of what these what these gentlemen did yesterday is unbelievable. Unbelievable. A lot of time and effort. What Jimmy put together, a lot of time and effort. Are we gonna let this fall by the wayside? No, we shouldn't. Let's adhere to this. And if this goes through, we'll have no problem, make it easier for everybody. But it's imperative that we all get together on the same sheet of music. Yes, in, in that regard, before we adjourn, when we finish this discussion, I'd like to have uh, another discussion about uh, the, what, what happened at the Popeyes uh, City Council meeting and, uh, and get your advice on that. But in the meantime, <coughs> let's just talk about this process. Uh, are people happy with this? Or? Can I make a? Please. Oh, All right. What I would like to know is how we get from what we're doing now to what this is. I know we've been told repeatedly that our land use code is a mishmash. It was sort of taken from Lee County and has grown like topsy. We put things in, we take things out. It's a horrible mess. And so what I want to know is what do we have to do to our code to go from this mishmash now to get to here? What are the steps that we would have to take? Mr. Inserpi identified this. It was uh, at all of your, your seats when you came in today. And what has been done is if you look at the zoning board symbol requirements for conceptual drawings, that section of it, which is the bottom of the first page, goes on to the second page. That really captures all the elements of what I was trying to show you as examples. And the reason why I say that is because our section of the land development code that defines what's required to be submitted and reviewed would need to be amended and we would need to make sure that those items that we're requiring uh, are listed specifically and, and if they need to be well defined. So that way we can make sure that what comes in the door is reflective of what you want to see. So would this amendment process be adding to or would we at the same time do some subtracting from? In other words, are we going to clean it up at, at all or are we just going to land this on top of what's there? Once that section of the code is opened up, um, it's, it's your discretion. Um, I, I definitely think within that submittal requirement section there can be some cleaning up as well as taking what's on here and making sure that these items that are labeled as the submittal requirements get included in the new draft of the code within that specific section. So once the section's opened up, it's absolutely fair game to be Well, let me, let me put my question a little differently then. Is it sufficient to just add this to our existing code, which of course is the least expensive process forward, and change the process so that we can rely on this and not have someone come with some contradictory mm -hmm. phrase that might be in there saying, oh, it says this over here, you didn't take it out. We would essentially pull out the existing section and place it in a new section, but okay. it's a small portion of the zoning, the plan development but overall. But it would, it would take the place of, so we Correct. wouldn't have any confusion. Th there, there, is, there is within that overall plan development portion of the land development code, there is a specific uh, section that deals with submittal requirements 
and then a little bit of, uh, that goes into review, and we would need to pull those out and replace those with, with this process Thank or you. whatever you define as this process. So in Bonita Springs, stormwater is a big issue mm -hmm. uh, and will continue to be a big issue. How, uh, what would we be requiring under your proposal uh, here? Thank what you. would we be requiring to be submitted at the zoning board stage? Give me some idea. It was that kind of goes to what uh, Ms. Craig was saying uh, because if we're requiring a lot of things, we may be wind up amending other, other parts. For example, currently the, the law with regard to planned developments with regard to stormwater makes a distinction between major and minor projects. And even with regard to major projects, doesn't require a heck of a lot at the zoning board stage. So we would be getting into, of necessity, uh, dealing with uh, stormwater in Article 4, Article 3. Mr. Chairman, I, Please. I think it's, it might be appropriate. We're, we're looking at a sheet that has a bunch of these items. That stormwater, for example, is on here. For the record, should we not itemize these? or can we do it by just yes. saying this is on file, file as what our changes are without going through the details? Yeah, no, I, th I think that's fine to, to, okay. to just file it, but I don't think that there's a legal reason to do anything. Else. I pick storm water because it's, uh, it's something that everybody understands in Bonita Springs. It, there's general agreement that we have to beef up our processes with regard to storm water. Um, and uh, you know, it's there's a whole workshop coming up that we've been invited to on redoing golf courses, abandoned golf courses. Well, what's the issue there? The issue is stormwater. You know, golf courses retain a lot of water. If you're going to have development, where's that water going? And do we want to get into that? Uh, but that, you know, that may be for a later meeting. But it seems to me that there's going to be, to answer your question, Barbara, I think that there's going to, of necessity, be some amending to do of Article 4. I don't, I don't think it's uh, going to be as simple as a submission. I don't think it's going to be massive. I think this is a great way to do it. I congratulate you for doing this. This is wonderful. But uh, I think there's still going to be some amending that's going to have to go on. Again, we haven't gotten into that. We wanted to minimize expenses, have not talked to the Theriac law firm. But we will begin once the city council approves it. We'll have to have some discussions with them. Mr. Chairman, we could go as far as rewriting the entire section, chapters three and four. That could be well, maybe one of our ultimate goals. Right. At this point, we focused on the submittal requirements because it's very difficult once you start crossing into each section just as our discussion is starting to go it creeps very quickly and, and unless you put up a, a defined scope of what you want to look at and they can include whatever you want I mean, we, we talked about submittal requirements but that doesn't mean that's the only thing we can discuss but once we define that we probably need to stay within that knowing that as we look to the future that entire chapter is going to need to be amended and so let me ask another question then. These are all a list of things we want to do, but assumedly each one of those in the list must be fleshed out a little bit more in the yes, law. You just can't say plans. Would the fleshing out include um, sample uh, diagrams like you've been using mm -hmm. there to show what it is we expect, or would we try to do it in words? We, we will try to do it in words if we can find a, a way to, to use illustrations as, as a better example. We will do that. Um, but you're correct. At this point, we've made a list. We've used other jurisdictions, submittal requirements to point out certain things we like and certain things we don't like. Um, but whatever the best way is to get that point across, I think, is what we'll do. At this point, I was thinking narrative, but it does not have to stay that way. I would think that something that might be useful at this point would be to take one or two of these things in our list and show what it would look like fleshed out. <coughs> So that, I mean, to look at this, 
this isn't sufficient to give the person who is doing the development enough idea about what we want. But it, you don't have to do all of them to start with to say this is the direction we want to go. But if we could see one or two of them fleshed out with what you would use as an example diagram to follow or picture to follow or words that explain what yeah, that I mean, would be. And, and at some point we're going to have to flesh yeah. it out. And I, I think it. if you don't do at least some example of that before we take it to the council, that will be the question. What will this really look like? So pick one or two. And I don't think you have to do the whole thing. but. And, and to go back to, to the, the point the chairman was making on, on stormwater, what you see in this plan is not only do you see the areas within there that they plan to treat stormwater, but you also see the surrounding areas and, with, and where their lakes are and any other natural or artificial water bodies that they have in the surrounding area. So it does provide you not only an example, a description of what the developer is proposing to do, but what they're working within mm -hmm. in terms of the local community. So uh, what I think that these things state, and we specifically wrote the words stormwater and retention existing in conceptual design, grading and drainage existing in conceptual design with narrative and plan, berms and water sculptural features. So through all of those uh, requirements when they're either defined or shown through an illustration, you should be yeah. able to see where somebody's going to be storing their water, how they're moving it. You won't see the, you won't see the infrastructure. So if, if there's inlets and, and drainage underneath the parking lot, you won't necessarily see that on, on the, the, the planning document, but you'll see where that water's going and you'll see areas that, that will be impacted by that. Mr. Chairman, this is basically, what should I say? It's a good starting point, okay? Basically everything is covered in here that we have to uh, uh, listen to. The more that's, uh, that's uh, uh, presented, the better we can do our job. But this is a good guide. I agree. And, you know, let's start. We've got to start somewhere. Let's start here with this guide. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> relative to stormwater, and I know that's a concern of yours as well as myself, all submittals will require a southwest Florida right. Water Management District requirements to be met, met minimally, minimally. If we want to require more detention <coughs> or retention, we can do that. But that's the decision the city has to make in order to accomplish our stormwater goals. I understand that. But it seems to me that when we look at a project, to ask the question, where's the water going? Mm -hmm. And to get an answer from that, that should be mandatory. It should be simple. You know, we, we, I, I mean, it, it, I've heard, so, you know, I, I haven't been here as long as most of you, but I could tell you, so it's just, you listen to the stories that they're telling us now and you come away and scratch your head and saying, what? So I think we really need to really delve into that. Well, I think if, if you look at the, at the whole process here, uh, the developer is going to have to address architectural site plan and landscaping issues in, in their entirety in order to come up with what his project is going to look like. And even though what we're asking him to present to us uh, is a conceptual treatment of these issues. At the same time, we can tell the developer, for instance, we're looking at your concept for stormwater retention, and we think you're a little short, and you need to come back to us. That you're lacking in, in that particular. Got it. Uh, so so the, the, the idea of concept works for both Got parties. It. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. What, what, what I think that you have every right to review is where a developer wants to store water, whether it's a dry retention area or, or lake. Uh, what I think you might want to avoid are discussing where they would have outfalls or things that, that would be permitted by the Water Management District. Because I know that there are times where somebody proposes an outfall in one location, and as they go through their permitting with the Water Management District, that location's moved or the design is, is shifted somehow. 
Uh, but what you don't generally see, it's very rare to see, uh, is that the idea of how that stormwater is going to be treated changes radically. So you don't see a lake that was proposed and the lake goes away. Uh, the lake may shift in size, but there's still a lake. So and and the, as I understand it, the water, uh, Southwest uh, Water Management does not get involved until later in the process. We used to require water management district permits prior to issuing development orders, and the state superseded that authority and told us that we cannot require that a state permit before we issue a local permit. So sometimes those permits are, are issued prior to our development orders, and sometimes they are not. Further comments? Uh, moving, moving ahead beyond this, uh, I don't know what if we have a time frame set this is a work in progress um, what do you do with uh, projects that are already on the table that you're working on uh, once this is implemented how do you phase those in with those that that have been submitted it's <clears throat> you you want them to comply to the greatest extent possible but they submit under the rules uh, Existing. As, as they are when at the time of submittal. Mm -hmm. For any new application, obviously, it would have to meet the current regulations. Okay. Some developers will, will handle resubmittals and provide additional details simply because they know it's important to this board and to the city council. Others will not. So t let me be specific. What will it take? Supposing we, we say this is great, mm -hmm. we like the idea of conceptual plans, it will give us a rational basis on which to make decisions. It will fulfill our uh, quasi-judicial function. And, uh, but what will it take to implement this? Well, at this point, our current schedule extends to the 16th of this month when right. we bring back whatever it is you discussed to City Council. With their blessing, then we start making changes and start actually start putting requirements into place for your deliberation. So, so if, they, if they say, we agree with this, mm -hmm. can we start to implement it right away? We, we can start to make the, the, the changes that need to be adopted so that it will come through this board, the local planning agency, because it'll be an ordinance, and then to the city council. Once it's passed by city council, it's a 30-day appeal period before an effective date, and once that effective date comes- e Even on submission, you have to go through that? Yes, sir, because it'll, it'll be an ordinance because we're, we'll be amending the land development code. Okay. So uh, you are looking at probably the summer when you start to see effective dates of this, if not early fall, depending on priorities and timeline. And typically what staff has done in the past in terms of dealing with pending changes is we've always let uh, applicants know, hey, listen, these changes are coming down the pipeline. You need to be prepared. If you want to get out in front of the ball and start submitting those things now, going <coughs> a little bit above and beyond, it'll be beneficial to you, the city, the board, so on and so forth. So until we can actually go through the legal process where we can require applicants to provide this info, we'll, obviously we're going to let them know that it's coming and sort of encourage them to do so in the meantime. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Oh, sorry. Mr. Chairman, let me ask a question. This is going to be a little uh, tricky between now and next fall when it's official, as John just stated. But is there any reason we as a zoning board cannot ask for additional information that maybe not is a requirement today, like for example, pin things down so we know what we're getting. We, uh, we can do that at a public hearing such as this mm -hmm. and require that even though it may not be on the current, uh, current uh, agenda. You, you, you can request additional information or specific detail, but it's not you're not able to require that until it's that ordinance is adopted so as Mike said and I, I briefly touched on some applicants will provide that information okay thank you mr. chairman I can't we have uh, I know mr. Mowers in the room and I don't know the other folks but we have a developer in the room or represents a lot of developers would it be um, uh, possible if we uh, hear some public comment on 
we just on their at the end of this we will hear at public the end okay. at, the, at the end of this before we'll have more public comment okay. another round of public comment after they've heard all can our discussion oh, sorry. may I make a comment to that to the point that you raise can we ask for additional information I think you know that it is my position that based on what the law requires of us in a quasi judicial review that some of the applications that come to us do not have sufficient information for us to make a reasoned basis on the facts presented to us. So it strikes me that a, pers a, a party coming to the city wanting to have approval of the zoning board would have a rather vested self-interest in providing the information that would allow a zoning board to make a rational decision based on the facts. I mean, that is, that is the basis of the whole reason I believe that we've gotten into this is we feel that what's coming now is insufficient to what the law requires us to do. And just to the, for the information of this board, while certain requirements may not be requirements until they're, they're passed through the ordinance, your comments, comments from the city council, these are discussed with applicants when they come in. We do inform them that just so you know, there's been recent discussions that have involved a certain topic. And to address that certain topic, you may want to provide this type of information. And so this is not in a vacuum. Your comments uh, usually come to the surface when someone comes in either for a pre-application meeting or when they call and they ask questions because they didn't have a pre-application meeting and they file their, they've already filed their, their application and they get comments back from us and want to know what to do to address those comments. So. Um, while it may not be a rule that we can point to in the land development code, we do encourage and explain the situation and, and why we would like to see certain things. And I don't want to go off topic, but we did have a, a few moments yesterday where we discussed the fact that the city is looking to implement a form-based code uh, in the downtown area. And we did look through this list that was prepared and realized there was nothing that was going to be inconsistent or incompatible with this list if we implement a form-based code either just in downtown or, or citywide. Oh. Mr. Chairman, I have one more comment. This is going to be the last meeting we have as a body um, before the presentation to the council. Well, there's a scheduled meeting for January 15th. No, that's the city council meeting is the 16th. But there is a zoning board. We haven't been told whether there will be a meeting or not, whether there's a case to be considered. Oh. Would you like a meeting? No, not necessarily, no. <laughs> uh, but well, it, 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 it could be that. If you would like to meet, uh, if you'd like to have that meeting, as, as we're ending this meeting, we determine whether that needs to be scheduled. Well, it seems to me that we should resolve things today to give the staff and uh, the committee a time to put together a presentation for the 16th. And uh, again, I would urge everybody to be at the, at the, at the meeting, at the uh, city council meeting on the 16th so that we can show our unanimity for this as well as uh, have you all present your, whatever your, is on your minds. It's a nine o'clock meeting. Yes, it is. Yes. Mr. Chairman, to that effort, did you want to go through these lists in a little more detail? I don't have a need for that, but if anybody else does, I'd be glad to listen. Okay. I want to just be sure about something. Last time when we brought our proposal to the council, there was considerable resistance to that. So I'm, I'm clear, I want to make sure I'm clear. We're no longer proposing a two-step process, right? Correct. Right. Okay, then it seems to me we were directed by the council, not redirecting the council, to come up with some kind of a, of a interim solution while we wait to see how the city feels about something like form-based zoning, which is going to have a small sort of, I guess you might call it, trial project of it to, to look at. And perhaps we would be wise to wait until the 300000 plus is spent by another um, nearby communities that we can, um, since it's all in the public domain, get some information off of. So when we present this to the council, it seems to me that's the important structure to present it in. We are doing something to try to make this better in the interim, 
knowing full well that in the long run, more needs to be done. And one of those things may be this form base, um, which believe me, I need to learn a lot more about. I don't know much about it. But and I think it's probably extraordinarily wise to do a small project like that and see how it works for you and to see what comes out of this other. That, I think, helps to sell this, what I would call intermediate step or baby steps in the right direction or something. And if you don't put that um, sort of package around what you're presenting, their eyes are going to glaze over and you're not going to get anywhere. And that, I think, is the most important thing about presentation is how you package it. Anything else? So is your wish that we uh, proceed to the City Council with the submission that was presented to us here today? I'll start at this end, Jim. It, it says no. everything I'm interested in, that's for sure. Roger. I trust the uh, discussion that you had yesterday that this is what we need, so I'll have an agreement. Uh, my only comment is that there's still a typo on uh, the second line. Mike, the word and should be four. Well, I'm not, I, I'm not sure that we should submit this document as is. I mean, we could take the points off of it, but, uh, you know, we'll, we could put it in a good presentation form. All right. Do you, do you want this exact language submitted? I mean, is that, or do you want the, the, the ideas submitted? I mean, and while you're thinking about that, if you would like this to be the foundation of the green sheet, yeah, the council, this could we be the foundation well. of a green sheet. Sure. All right. And then yeah. as part of the presentation on right. the visual side, we could have some of the exhibits that John showed, put them up on the big screen for council to see, maybe make it easier to, to understand how these words would come to life via a visual. Okay. Okay. That's and fine. I'd like yeah. to, as opposed to giving them the 200 some odd pages right. uh, that you were provided, maybe just a handful of, of specific examples that we can use the pointer <coughs> and show how these requirements would be reflected on, on a plan. Pretty I think much the ones you've held up here this morning are right. I think uh, if you give them a, the a, a, a typical pattern book with this stuff in it, mm -hmm. I think that would be helpful to show them this is what yes, sir. this that is what it's going to look like. That way we end. can identify. Yeah. yeah. So I'm good with that, Russ. I was going to ask, suggest the same thing. You know, if we can have some examples of that. So I'm good. in approval. Good. I'm in approval, but I really want to underscore that we have to be very clear why we're doing this and what it's going to accomplish, that it's not going to be sufficient to give this bare bones, I like your idea, the pointing, the visuals on what it is, but really have a clear statement what this is going to accomplish and why. That's how you'll get the council paying attention. Robert. I'm rolling this over. I <coughs> Everything is well put. This is a guide, okay? We have to present to the city council. When we presented to the city council the last time, it wasn't really, they really didn't embrace it, okay? This is laying out what we want to do, all right? Plus the visual effect. I think that's a good starting point, and I think city council will look at something like that. And if they don't, that's their problem. That's their shortcoming, not ours. But I think if we submit the plus the visuals like John Dahmer just stated, I don't think we'll have a problem. Mr. Okay. Chairman, can I add one, one thing? <clears throat> Yesterday in uh, our, our meeting, I, I presented a, sort of a wind-up statement. If I could... Uh, present that here today for the record, I'd appreciate it. And maybe what might want to be included in the, uh, in, in the proposal. But currently under existing review and approval process, in order to start construction, the above items and process adds no additional time, cost, nor cost to the applicant's total pre-construction process. No question, it will shorten the time to get a shovel on the ground. The proposed process moves some of the currently required information up in order to inform both the, board, both the zoning board and the city council 
to see what the applicant intends to build. It, it, it's really fairly simple. We're, we're not asking for any more, but a little bit advanced on some of the detail of what's expected to be built on any site. Is that all? Okay, so we'll, we'll proceed with that. Uh, before I go to the next subject, and there is a next subject, I would ask for public comment on what we've just discussed. Just a, a couple of comments, and I, I'm pretty much in agreement with what you guys are, are and, and Gal are, are, are proposing. Um, one of the things that we talked about yesterday in the subcommittee meeting is you as we move forward, so let's just say that the rezone application is granted. You've, you've gotten all your checklist, conceptual drawings. Uh, you've got your uh, colored site plan that shows ingress, egress, drainage, and, and, and everybody gives a thumbs up. City Council gives a thumbs up. Then it moves to staff. I'd like to see something addressed, and maybe it's not now, but maybe it's after or when you're drafting the ordinance of what happens when the developer or, or purchasers moving through the, the, the LDO development order process and something arises whereby staff says, whoa, guys, you guys are, are outside the, the conceptual parameters that were agreed to and you have to go back to the zoning board for whatever change that they deem is, 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 was not agreed to. For instance, uh, for whatever reason, South Florida Water Management said the lake can't be here it's got to be in the front of the building, which completely changes the dimensions or, 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 or uh, the, the, the site plan that was agreed upon. What I'd like to see happen is the ability for the developer to come right back to, to this board with the new renderings, the new site plan, and, 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 and say, guys, you know, we're trying to work hand in hand. This is what South Florida Water Management is telling us, or, or perhaps it's the city architect or, or whatever it is that, that threw this project outside the parameters so the zoning board can immediately say yay or nay. So that, that, so that it eliminates having to restart the process, um, so long as it's not the fault of the developer. Obviously, if he's trying or she is trying to do something that was well outside the parameters on their own, they should be penalized for it. But if it's the staff deems it wasn't anybody's quote unquote fault, but we now have a project that doesn't look like what was agreed upon, there should be some way to remedy that with the board directly. Um, so that's the first point. The second point is, I agree we should use John's exhibits when you present to the, the council about what the pattern book and what the site plan and what the landscape elevations, et cetera, should look like. But I think after the ordinance is passed, assuming it's passed in the summer or fall, once the first group or two goes through and you see a pattern book and you see a presentation that you really like, you take that book and direct staff to show it to any prospective developers and say, guys, here's what you need to follow. And it's, you know, and I think once you get one or two or three of these hearings through, you can pull bits and pieces and say, we really like this site plan rendering. We really like this landscape plan. Because that's what they do in Astero. When, when you go to Astero, they, they show you two or three pattern books at the staff level. They'll show you two or three pattern books say, this, this is the one that everybody likes. You, you can see the, the different dimensions. You can see the different levels of detail. Um, that's all I've, I really got. Uh, as far as those groups that are in process, um, I know you guys and gal would like to see the, the new submittal requirements presented. Um, I know by law they don't have to, but when staff tells you, hey, guys, and gives you the little elbow, you better show up with some colored renderings and some colored site plans. Most developers will do it because it's not a significant amount of money. It's not a significant amount of time. Um, and I think that staff does a very good job of, of, of informing my clients what they should do in order to get approval. Now, you can't require it, but it can be encouraged. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we will proceed along those lines. There's no further public comment. Uh, at the last uh, meeting, some of you expressed dismay as what, what happened at the uh, city council meeting with regard to the Popeyes case. I went back and uh, 
reviewed the, uh, the tape. I went through it twice. And here is, uh, I think we need to discuss this because I think we need to take some action. When I watched it, I was struck by the total disregard for anything we did. Not once did any city council person mention the words zoning board. Nobody cared as to what we did. Nobody was interested. We might as well have not existed. And that's a serious problem. And I think that we have to be candid with the council uh, and address it with them. It went so far as when the developer presented his case, one city council member moved, made a motion, a formal motion, that the vote be taken. Right. Wasn't even interested what staff had to say, much less what the zoning board had to say. There was a second for that motion. And it was only because the attorney said, wait a second, you know, we gotta have something on the record and John coming up and, and, and speaking. And, uh, but we were totally disregarded at the meeting. Now it's one thing, uh, we make recommendations and they're under no obligation to follow our recommendations. This is a, this is a different, different level of, of disregard and disrespect. And I think that we ought to address it and we ought to uh, uh, speak to the council. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I concur with your, totally agree. Um, I watched the tape as well, not twice, but I watched it once and saw enough. I mean, they could have proposed to put that chicken restaurant in the middle of the roundabout on Old 41 and uh, and Terry Street, and at that point in time, they would have, I, I got the feeling, they would have approved it, as ridiculous Absolutely. as that may seem. It was more about, we want a chicken restaurant, and we agreed we want a chicken restaurant. And they are the governing body, and, and we have, we're somewhat beholden to them. But I completely agree, it was, it just blew me away when I saw it. I would like Mr. to make sure. I really would like to make two comments about that. First of all, yes, they are the legislative body, but they are not sitting as the legislative body at that moment. They are sitting as a quasi judicial review board determining whether there should be an exception or a um, variance to the law. That is not the appropriate point for lawmaking, though they have absolute power to make the law when they want to. The second thing is the reason we weren't paid attention for is there was no report given from us. And that I'm gonna lay at your feet, guys. I thought we had all agreed that the staff would present each time there was a hearing like this, a formal report from the zoning board stating what we had decided and the basis we made that decision on because we're not free to just make a decision out of the blue, we have to put it upon specific provisions in the law, which we did that day very clearly, and no such report was ever given. And I found that very distressing going back. I have to, have to disagree with you on this, and I'll tell you why. When the developer comes up and it, uh, uh, presents their case, we all listen to it, we all give our input, and then we make the decision, we approve or we disapprove. Now, then it's city council's job to pick up what we recommended. But they have to know what we recommended to do Let that. them do That's their homework. Let them do their homework then. And they're not doing their homework. I'm sorry. That's the way I feel. They're not doing their homework. Well, how they just they disregard Robert, you're us not, completely. You're not, you're not saying that the staff should not present oh, well, our no, report. No, 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 no. Okay. No. Staff no. should. Right. No, no doubt about it. But uh, if we make a recommendation and they, like you just pointed out, Nothing was ever said about the zoning board. It's not the first time. It's happened previous times. So sort what of. is the sense of us sitting here and listening to a case and then rendering our thoughts on it and then they just chuck it aside? And that's the feeling I got at the last one. They just 
put it aside. Like Roger said, if, so, if they would have said, let's put this thing on, on, on Terry Street on roundabout, they would have done it. He's absolutely right. <clears throat> Sort of playing off both of the comments, okay. um, the zoning board does receive as part of the packet for the case a copy of the minutes from the zoning board meeting and staff does write a synopsis of what took place at the zoning board and includes it in the packet. Right. Um, so I, I guess I would like some further guidance if more needs to be well, done than yeah, that. Yeah, we, we've had this discussion had in this the discussion. past. We have and we've said. And, and the statute as I read it, requires that you present a report from the zoning board. And, not and you're not doing it. And, and it has to be done. We know that, that they get a pile of paper like this. If a, if a report is not presented orally as part of the presentation, and I believe this discussion included should we have Larry as chair or someone from the board go and make that um, position, make that report, and my understanding of what we concluded was that we were satisfied with having you make the report. But I would add, if you make the report, <laughs> I am not satisfied with what happened there, and not at all. And I think that was a, um, that was wrong for the council members who, in, in effect, unless they sat and read through all this, which I agree they should. But keep in mind, guys, all we do is the zoning stuff. They've got 80 bajillion other things on their docket. And there's only so many hours in the day. One of the reasons for the oral presentation is to focus the mind of the people that are making the decisions on the critical issues. And one of the critical issues, unless you want to disband the zoning board, is the report from the zoning board. We are supposed to be giving them a recommendation based on the law, based on a very careful review of the record, the facts, and a reasonable decision based on that record. That's what the law requires, yeah. and that's what they should have clear information about before they do their own review. They, of course, can do their own view review. They can disagree with us completely, but you can't disagree with something that you don't even know what is. And that's, I think, what happened that night. I don't think they had any clue why we really had made this basis. I this think you, I, I agree with what you're saying, and I think that what they need to do in the future and we need to give them guidance perhaps on this they need to take the emotion out of it they, it was an emotional decision that they made um pure emotion it had been something that had been discussed bannered about the city for some time and they had made up their mind that this was going to happen this restaurant was going to be appro approved and welcome to town and so i think it was an emotional decision um, I, 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 I mean, I watched that tape. It was very evident. And Which is uh, not a quasi-judicial decision at all. No. Which is what is required. Want to say something? Yeah, but, but I add one, one thing. Uh, Mike, putting something in a city council packet is important. However, it may never be read by way over half the council members in my opinion so and and obviously this is roger pointed out is emotional thing it's it, it, in hindsight there should have been more more emphasis relative to our decision presented to the council from staff thank you i think we made our me our message pretty clear to council at this point and we don't need to belabor the the point that uh, well ha have have we made it what, what have we done to make it clear to them uh, to that, that, that's I'm just, sorry to to you, staff you to mean. staff yes, okay staff. my question and for you is what should we do if anything what's your wish and making our views uh, our dismay known to City Council well I will tell you what I'm prepared to do which you're welcome to join me with or not I have written a letter to the council and the mayor expressing my great distress, not only by that particular omission, but by the decision and the way it was made. You cannot amend a law with a variance. That's positive, positively silly. And what they did was to change a law without changing the law. They have the perfect right to change that law, and my letter states that. They can propose a change to the ordinance, pass it in the normal way of doing it, and get rid of this provision that says you can't build a similarly situated business within 500 feet of the other. Personally, I think this is an example of a law that closed the barn door after all the horses were out. 
go right up and down 41. There are not a whole lot of places to put anything, let alone fast food restaurants. So perhaps the sensible thing to do is for the, legis the our legislative body, the council, to eliminate this provision completely. It's very easy to do. You just say, I propose that we eliminate this provision, and you do your first reading and your second reading, and you vote, and you're done. And that would have been an honest, legal way to go about doing what they really wanted to do. And I don't have any trouble with that's what they wanted to do. But the law is the law. We either are a nation of laws and a city of laws, or we are a city of emotion, or whim, as you might. And once your council starts to behave as if the law doesn't matter, and they don't have to abide by it, who else is going to abide by it? That's a really important question. That is what my letter says to the council. I'm happy to offer it to you all, and we can pen one together or send it on my own. I, I have offered in the end to resign if they feel that they disagree with my position or are angry with me or whatever. I cannot serve a council in this capacity that requires me to act in a quasi-judicial way if the council I'm serving does not regard its own law as something that must be followed. And it's that simple. I applaud your attitude. Uh, brings up a question, but where was the legal guidance uh, at the meeting? There are a bunch of attorneys sitting at that, that table. If it was a question of a, of a law being changed on, uh, illegally, uh, where was the comment from them? It's an interesting right. question. Right. Uh, and uh, what, what I couldn't help but notice in going back is how the applicant themselves sought to distance themselves from this legal voodoo. They kept saying repeatedly throughout the hearing, we're, we, we, we're not part of this variance thing. We don't think that's, that's appropriate. And, and yet, it, it seemed to go unnoticed. Even the applicant was saying it. And we can say precisely I, 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 where it's, our, it's, it's almost shocking. We can say precisely where our legal advice came from because I asked that question very directly from uh, Mr. Spain, I think his name is, who was on the phone and whose job it is to advise in these land use things. And I said, can, could this be done under the law without it being amended? And he said, absolutely not. So had we had a presentation that said what the zoning board decided and showed and stated on the basis that we made that decision, which was clear legal guidance from the council, I think it would have changed the tone of that. You know, th really there is no problem here with whether you want to build a chicken restaurant or not. That isn't the issue. If you want to do it, there's a very simple legal way for this council to have done it. What is wrong, I think, is the way they accomplished that. That sets a precedent that's very unfortunate. Nobody on this board ever expressed opposition to building a chicken restaurant. That's true. In our decision, we focused on the law, the law. and that we were bound by the law, and it was, uh, we followed the advice of the staff, and that was the end of it. Just pretty remarkable place we're in. Um, any thoughts from anyone on what we should do? Or I think uh, what you're doing as far as writing a letter and putting it in print and putting it in the record, I think uh, provides some, um, some credibility from, from, from us and from what we're trying to do. And um, it may be um, having somebody, um, maybe Larry, you know, maybe expressing that to them you know, on a, in an oral way. Do we want to, or, uh, what, what would you say, Russ? Do we want to join in the letter? Well, you ought to leave, read the letter before you. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. <laughs> Interpretation. Would, and I would be willing to modify it if it, if it were Bar to come from Barbara, all. may I suggest that you draft a letter? Oh, I have. It's right okay. Here. I mean, I, I, the only reason this letter is not already out is that I decided that it was appropriate for me to inform you guys first before I did what I was going to do. So I am prepared to send it under my own name if you all prefer that, that's fine by me. I have a copy for you that I brought with me. 
Um, you can think about it. I would like to see that. Uh, we, one for each of you. I you want to yeah, I don't think we're allowed to have those kind of communications back yeah. and forth. No. Via no. email. Oh, no, sir. No. <laughs> no, sir. But if so you do, if, if you we heard it, it now, if we. She can pass the letter out. Oh, there, is there multiple copies? No. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Great. that's what she was saying. So why don't we take a minute I could, and. I mean, I'd be happy to read it to you if you'd like. That would put it in the record. Well, it would, wouldn't it? Is there enough? Because if there's not, I can. Yeah, there's one. I got one extra. Oh, that's probably my copy. That's just back up to Oh, thank you. <coughs> you want to recess for five minutes while we read this? We can, we can remain in session. While you read it, since I've read it, I'm going to excuse myself for a minute. So let me uh, let me offer some comments here, if I may, before while you continue to read. Um, I'm fine with the beginning of the letter. I have a lot of problems with with later on. Uh, I think it's somewhat gratuitous. I think we ought to focus the attention of the city council on, on the process as well as the law. And uh, I think you made the point quite eloquently that they violated the law. And I, don't, I think it's somewhat gratuitous to, uh, 
to then go after the legal counsel and so on. I, I, I don't think that adds anything. It just, I think, diffuses the, the message. And, uh, and then it goes on after that, and um, I think it starts to get a little bit repetitious. And, but there's nothing in here that I'm reading that says that uh, you totally ignored the zoning board. Well, that was, um, I agree, that was a point I was going to make here orally, and I think that that is rectified, rectifiable in the future by having a formal report orally given of what the zoning board's position is. There is a way to it, and I believe there's a way to rectify, and I say this in the letter, what has happened here. What the council should do is move to amend the law to do what it wanted to do. If it's not going to apply this, the appropriate thing to do is to amend the law. And short of doing that, leaving this law on the bo book that they've obviously intend to ignore, ignore I think is inappropriate and wrong. But so I, I think that my concerns about paying attention to the zoning board would be addressed by having a formal report from the zoning board at the beginning because after all, that's what we, our role is. It's to give a recommendation to the council. If nobody says what our recommendation is and we trust them to read something that's in a packet that's got 400 pages in it, you're not gonna have that done. It is the single most important thing that comes out of this process of a zoning board doing a first <coughs> review so that the council, that as I pointed out, has a zillion other things to do doesn't necessarily have the time to do the long involved review of most of the cases. If it's a huge one that has 100 people in the room, they're gonna do the whole thing. But on the smaller ones, they re or the ones that aren't so controversial, they rely, I thought, at least on a zoning board to give them the advice based on a very careful review that we're supposed to take under the law. And nowhere in your letter do you mention that, and that's, that's my my yeah, okay. All right, well, that puts a second message into my mess letter. My letter was just about they're ignoring the law, but if you want that second message, you could write the letter so that both of those messages. So, Mr. Happen. Chairman, are you suggesting that maybe Ms. Uh, Ms. Craig uh, redraft the letter, or would you like to? No, I, I, I don't think it's, I, I'd be glad to, to draft the letter. I don't, I don't want to be, you know, to say that I'm going to take You're her letter and, you know, what's, that, what's on her mind is on her mind. I would uh, offer a suggestion. Oh, well, that's why I brought it here. The particular uh, language beginning on page two with the words, uh, your city legal counsel. Okay. It's, it's our city legal counsel as well. Staff's counsel is the outside counsel, but our counsel is that. And I think it's, uh, as I said, I think it's gratuitous. Enough said about that. Um, I, I, I would have a much shorter letter if it were me. You do what you want, but it seems to me you can make your points uh, and it would have enormous impact. I think the letter is generally good. I just, it's not my style. I, I would go shorter and I would, I would have two points in it. One, you violated the law. Second, you totally ignored the zoning board. Maybe you don't want a zoning board anymore. <laughs> That's great. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> Abolish us. <laughs> no problem. But don't pretend that we have this zoning process and then you totally ignore it like we didn't exist. To me, that's... And I think that's a very important point, which I tried to make here. It was one of the points right. I wished to make orally. Uh, if that's a, a point that you want to make, maybe we should have it regular level. My issue, and it's very, very right. personally strongly felt, is that a quasi-judicial process requires that you follow the law, and a legislative process requires or allows you to make the law. And unfortunately, at local governments with this weak mayor form of government that we have, we have combined what are separation of powers in what we think of as our national and state governments, the legislature and the executive and a judicial. But if you ever pay any attention to what I asked Mike, our whole administrative state is based on exactly this kind of combination of 
powers, quasi-legislative, quasi-judicial, and executive, all in one body, like the EPA or whatever you want. Sometimes I think we lose sight, and I think the council probably lose sight, as to which hat it has on. And it needs to be reminded that when you're doing a review of a zoning change request, that you have a judicial kind of hat on, not a legislative hat. And that's the message I really wanted to get to them, is that they were acting like a legislative body. And that's Mr. Chairman, I'd like to add something to that. In the beginning of this meeting, and I said it yesterday and I said it again today, got to get on the same sheet of music, we got to talk to each other. This isn't the first time this has happened to us. And it's not the first time that we as a board have mentioned it that, you know, what is, What's the, re what's the functioning of the zoning board if you don't listen, okay? We're doing our job, we're doing the research, and then we give, give our explanation, and it falls on deaf ears. It's not the first time, and I'm sure it's not gonna be the last time. So how do we rectify that? You know, I mean, I, I don't understand it. An how are we gonna rectify question. that? I, th I think maybe we get lost in the in the volume of paperwork and it's and it's not brought to their attention with, with 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 how we see it you know they got so much going on and somehow it gets i agree with you they've got an awful lot going on yeah. but if you've got a case that's in front of you mm -hmm. all right and you've got to make a decision i'm talking about city council now mm -hmm. don't you think that you're going to have to take that paperwork out of the middle of that stack <laughs> and research it mm -hmm. and read up on it yeah, That's just think. common sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's high expectations, probably. <laughs> okay, so what, 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 what's your wish? Should we, when we go to the meeting on the 16th, should we, uh, as an opening statement, should I mention this, should I not mention it, and just go directly to the subject at hand, which is the uh, presentation? I think you should divorce these two things. If you want to get this um, change through, That's kind of my which is what they really asked us to do, I don't think it should be attached to this, what I would refer to for me as a slap on the hand. I would rather just do that as a separate issue. It's a pass. Thing. Is it, uh, I, I wish the attorney were here, but maybe you know, John, uh, would it be legal for me as the chair to call each member of the city council to express the concerns of the zoning board as i understand it you can talk to them outside of meetings because you are not on the same council that's my understanding board. yes sir I, I don't know that absolutely but that's my understanding yeah. um mr chairman what, what would, would you be authorize me to do that with the zoning board mm -hmm. i would only do it if we were unanimous anything short of unanimous I don't think we should before do it. I, before I answer that, Mr. Sure. Chairman, would it be better, perhaps, to, for you to draft a letter to present and to be read at the council meeting rather than calling them? And, and then well, the idea of divorcing it, I think, is a, well, is a before, good idea. I mean, I think well, I want to listen to that idea. I mean, it seems to see me it when we start to mix them up, I don't think they're appropriately mixed up anyway. You know, I mean, what okay. we're looking at isn't at least I could, an I could, error I could of one letter, occurred, occasion. What we're talking about is a change process. I, I Two would, different things. <laughs> okay, you would downplay it a little bit. I would be <coughs> pretty, confident. I would be low key. Uh, and yeah. Just to just express our across. dismay yeah. you know, on two grounds. One, you violated the law, and two, you totally violated the process. You're not looking to antagonize them. No, no, but I think they have to know. You know, if they took the time to watch this, which is being recorded, they would know how we feel. And I would, in my phone call, I would urge them to do that so that they could hear everybody's point of view. Then, excuse me, to further my thought, to go on the record because this is being recorded, mm. I think as a board, we should either unanimously agree or, or not right to, to what Barbara has put in well keep in mind that basically. my background is being a professor and we talk long <laughs> and yours is a lawyer 
and you talk short. So you're looking at a different way of coming to expressing the same right. position. And I have no trouble. I mean, I write the way I write, but I have no trouble if we wanted to do some sort of thing from all of us to have a short, very succinct th thing do what, what Larry is suggesting. But when I was writing this at night when I was <clears throat> pissed, um, <laughs> I probably that's, why beat will go that's why you don't send things like that right when you finish writing them. You wait and you get some input to it as to what yeah. um, seems to be the wisest thing to do in the end. And I'm perfectly willing to take that out, Larry, if you want, and just send this myself. If that's what, if you want to bring this message to the board, I don't, uh, council, I don't mind doing it on my own name. I don't have any trouble with that. Um, then I can soften it a little bit. The other point that's made, though, seems to me, I mean, th this is a legal point about a specific case. The case, your thing you're making is a failure there to make the board's information clearly available to the council, and we want that to not happen in the future. We want a process change. So this is another process change where it becomes the norm that the, ca the staff or you or someone prevents presents to the council before they begin their de deliberations the recommendation from their zoning board as to what we think should be done and why. And if that's presented, then if they ignore it, we can't say it's because they didn't know about it. Right, right. And I do think that it's very important for us to make more certain that the effort we put into it is at least brought to them for their consideration. It's in the end their consideration. We don't direct, we recommend. But our recommendation doesn't get there if nobody ever puts it in front of them. And it is, even though they should read it, I will tell you, you know, there's reality. There's only so many hours in a day, and these are a lot of pages. I mean, I'm sort of a driven character. <coughs> I tend to read them all, but I rather imagine even among us, sometimes there's time they're not all read. So I just think that's a very sensible, I thought we'd already made it, to be perfectly honest, but I think it's a sensible new rule that the decision of the zoning board, the, the, the recommendation of the zoning board is orally given to the council at the meeting. And I, if you all agree with that, I think we could give that advice to the staff at this point. I, I think that, um, Barbara, you should go ahead and, and send your letter personally. Uh, I think the process has to change at the council meeting. I mean, the you got to remember that the applicant is standing up and making, and you know, it's brand new. It's a new game. They're making a new presentation. Uh, they're ignoring anything that we've that we've said, uh, which is the right thing for them to do in making their presentation. But at the same time, even though there is a record of what the zoning board has said, it hasn't been read. It should be physically introduced. Uh, and read into the record uh, as a part of the proceedings after the, either before, during, or after the applicant has made his presentation. So it doesn't get buried and so that it becomes part of the record of that, that day's proceeding. Can I ask a question, Rich? Should that come from staff? Well, staff well, is always- we decided at, at, the, uh, at our meeting, should that be presented by staff at the uh, city council meeting? I would think so. I would think so too. That's right. right? That is part of what they are bringing as the case, which remember we set, we encouraged you, and I think you're doing this now, to have the staff present the staff report and the applicant present his own um, case. So what part of the staff's report to the board at include, this point yeah includes the recommendation of the zoning board. And I would think that would be the sort of introduction to the staff's report and say, and this is ours. And sometimes we, ag we happen to agree with you completely, and I give you great credit for sticking to your guns on that one. Um, but I think had you prefaced that by this was the zoning board's decision too, that adds some weight to yours. If we happen to disagree with you, I understand that takes some weight away from you. But that's the point of our being, I think, is to do that, is to do those two things. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Please. It appears obvious 
based on this discussion that the zoning board is very dissatisfied with the action of the city council totally ignoring our recommendation relative to the subject case of Popeyes. We'd like to suggest that staff presents at the, zone, at the city council meetings strongly the recommendations of our board and obviously most of them uh, that when I say strongly would uh, hopefully remove the emotional part of them but at least to obey the law don't totally ignore the law as the zoning board respected the law in our recommendation. That's my motion. I don't, I don't know whether it's in order. Well, I don't think it, it is. I think we would have had to, to notice something, but I get the gist of what you want. I agree with you, Jim. But. Well, I'm, I'm looking for a vote of unanimity, unanimity of this board. I think, I think that there is unanimity here, and uh, we've made our point, uh, and I don't think a motion is necessary. Okay. So I'm going to rule it out of order. Um, the question uh, remaining is, do you want the staff also to, uh, whenever, when's the next uh, city council meeting? 16th. 16th. Is that the 16th? Is that the one we're going to be at? Mm -hmm. <coughs> they just had but, their first meeting Wednesday. But actually, there's there's another one. They're having a workshop. That's the That's one on, on the, the golf course. Golf course. There, well, it's That's not necessarily a city council workshop, but it is a workshop. Yes, sir. Oh, it's not a city council <coughs> workshop. No, I sir. It's, it it's, more for the, it's more of a public workshop. Public, yeah. Oh, okay. That was on the 8th. Yes, sir. So that would not be appropriate to... To, to bring it up there I, again I, I want to heed your advice that we keep these two things separately I think it's critical that we do. And, I don't uh, have anything to do with one another either so how do we how do we before the 16th communicate uh, what uh, Mr. Worcester has described as our extreme displeasure with uh, the city's council process may I add something to this uh, Mr. Chairman Roger brought up a good point if everybody gets a letter on the board, okay, they're going to have to respond to it, whether they respond to it one-on-one -on -one or whether they respond to it in, in, uh, in a meeting. But, I mean, by you going out and contacting each individual, is that going to solve the issue? So I think if there's a letter prefer, sent, you would prefer that record. I write a letter expressing everybody's point of view. I would prefer to see it as one voice right from the board. board and I'm perfectly willing to hold my letter back and have you draft what you think is a critical letter to go and have it go unanimously from all of us I think that would be the more powerful okay. statement to make I have made my position rather clear no, I think, I but I, I, I'll rewrite uh, with, with that you in mind, with, with you being would. gracious enough to do that uh, I would rewrite it uh, incorporating both points you, you you violated the law and oh by the way we are the zoning board, and you want to get rid of us, get rid of us, but otherwise, pay attention. Well, maybe you could say that. Fine with me. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> yeah. You got to have a little bit of humor yeah, to it's, lighten yeah, it's, the <laughs> seriousness of this. This is serious stuff we're talking it about, and, it's the law. and it's, it's very discouraging. It's the law. I'm, 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 I would be lying to you if I told you I wasn't uh, extraordinarily discouraged at this point. But it's great having your input. I mean, it's very helpful. Uh, and thank you, Barbara, for drafting that. This really is uh, very helpful. That's what I do when I'm angry. I get it out. <laughs> I used to do that. <laughs> and I had well, the 24-hour rule. Yeah. I'd stick it in my desk. Well, it, and if it looked as good the next day as it did the prior day, I'd send it. But 95% of the time, it remained in the drawer because it didn't look as good the second day. Uh, when the smoke wasn't coming out of my ears, you know. <laughs> 
So how, how would, after you write this letter, how is it, how is it to be presented? Well, I would have to, I would have to get your approval to send it, I think. So somehow. Oh, or, or we could give you our unanimous position here that we agree that the um, zoning board's input should be clearly stated and at least addressed. Right. You don't have to take it, but you should address it. And two, that we were distressed by the Popeye, um, the council's, hap council's handling of the Popeye case in that it ignored its own law. And we very, we find that troubling if you're asking us to apply the law that you do. And however you want to phrase yeah, no, it. I, I think but those two other two that. big. I'd like to second that motion. <laughs> There's no motion. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what I just. Would I not come back to you no, with the just letter? Just send it. You send it as the you chairman. You all good on with that? I give you my trust. You all, you're all good with that. Yes. Yes. I mean, I think. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll, I'll work on it this weekend and get it out. Good. And I will not send mine then. In that Correct. Case. I will so use yours. Yes. Okay. And that's that. But fine. I will. If they wish it. to know my opinion, they need only one. Now, how do we expect an answer? <laughs> So you I'm going to I'm going to I'm things. going you to say advice, you don't necessarily I write to you on behalf of a unanimous zoning board. That's right. 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 That's how you write it. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's very important. Is there anything further to come before? Uh, is there any public comment with regard to what we've been discussing? Hearing none. I think the uh, business of the zoning board is completed. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? I will second. Roll call, please. On the motion to adjourn. Even have to roll call. Bob and Serby? Yes. Barbara Craig? Russ Lynn? Yes. Chairman Kellender? Yep. Richard Donnelly? Yes. Roger Brunswick? Yep. James Worcester? Yes. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you for your work.